Questions 21 through 25 on the 2011 Grade 8 Goss Math Contest. A collection of coins includes only pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Using the coins in this collection, it is possible to create any amount of money less than $1. What is the smallest possible number of coins in this collection? Well, to create sums anywhere, I guess, from 0 to 4, you need at least four pennies, right? That is mandatory. Then to create a sum anywhere from five to nine, you would need an additional one nickel because if you take any of these sums and add the nickel, you'll be able to get a sum from five to nine. So like for example, you had two pennies, you add a nickel, you get seven cents, and that's in that range. Now let's go to the next range, 10 to 19. What else do I need to create? Well, 10 to 19, obviously I need a dime. If I take any of the sums that I've created here and add a dime, I'll get up to this range. Now we get up to this range, 20 to 24. That's a unique one in the sense that it's a smaller range than 10 to 19, right? I didn't get into a bigger zone because I need one more nickel for that. Now the good news is we can now go up by 25s. 25 to 49, all I need is a quarter. And I can take any of the sums in here, add 25, and I'll get into this range. In a very similar way, any of the sums that are between 50 and 74, I can create by adding another quarter. And finally, from 75 to 99, because they're saying less than a dollar, right? So up to 99, you would just need one more quarter. And the good news is that just with these coins, you can create any of the sums from well, 0 to 99. So how many coins do I have? I got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 coins is all you need. So number 21, the answer is A. In the diagram, each of the integers 1 through 9 is to be placed in one circle so that the integers in every straight row of three joined circles add to 18. The six and one have been filled in. The value of the remaining, the value of the number represented by x is one through nine. Those numbers are the only numbers that we are going to be looking at, and even less than that because one and six has already been placed. So this is just one of those trial and error. You know, you fiddle around with it until you get the right answer, that everything fits, and hopefully you'll get it sooner rather than later. I'm going to start here. 1 is already given, so these two numbers have to add up to, not 18, but 17, right? Because all the three numbers have to add up to 18. This is 1, so the other two have to add up to 17. Well, the only way to get up to 17 with the remaining numbers is 8 and 9. And like I said, this is trial and error. You're not sure, does the 8 go here or does the 8 go here? Well, let's just put the 8 here and the 9 here, okay? So if I make a mistake, I can always go back and retrace my steps and try again. Now I will look here. If these two have, uh, those three add up to 18, then that means this and this add up to 9. So of the remaining numbers, which two will I choose to add up to 9? I think uh, 5 and 4, there's a few choices, right? And uh, But I think for 9, there's only really two choices, either the 2 and 7 or the 5 and 4. I'll choose 5 and 4. And then, of course, then I have to decide, does the 5 go here or does the 5 go there? Well, I'll put the 5 here and the 4 I'll put here. Then I have to figure out what goes here. Obviously, that 5 and 6 add up to 11, so the x has to be a 7. Okay. Well, we still have to complete this and make sure everything works out. All of these have to add up to 18, and the only way that's possible is if this is a 3. 
and then these three have to add up to 18, and if I put the 2 there, which is the remaining number, it works. So everything matches up. Now, of course, I had already done this prior to making the video, and that's why I was able to do it so smoothly. You might have to do a little bit of trial and error, but it's not really that bad. So number 22, the answer is 7, and that would be choice C. The trapezoid shown has a height of length 12, a base of length 16, and an area of 162. What is the perimeter of the trapezoid? First thing I'm going to do is drop a perpendicular from that down to there, making this basically a rectangle and a triangle. This is 12, and this whole thing is 16. I'm going to label this x and this 16 minus x. Now, the area is first the area of the rectangle, which is 12 times 16 minus x. And then the triangle, which is 1 half base times height, 1 half six, uh, x times 12. And they told me the area is 162. So I put the 162 there. Now let's expand this. This is going to be 192 minus 12x, and that is just 6x. So this becomes 30 minus 6x is 0, so 6x is equal to 30, and therefore x is equal to 5. And what are they asking for? The perimeter. Okay. So the perimeter, let's fill all these in now. If x is 5, this is obviously 5. This is going to be 16 minus 5, which is 11. And therefore, this over here at the top would be 11. And then the only thing we don't know is that one, but that one we can figure out with Pythagoras. Let's just call it h for hypotenuse. So 12 squared plus 5 squared is h squared. So that's 144 plus 25 is equal to h squared. And therefore, that's 169 is h squared. And therefore, h is 13. And now we have all the sides. We can figure out the perimeter. So we got that 12, this 11, this 11, that 12. Oh, that one you don't need. Ooh, good thing I noticed that. But I need this one. That's 5. And then this one, 13. Okay. All right, so this is what, um, if you add this up, 52 for the perimeter of that shape, and that would mean that is choice B. Ada has a set of identical cubes. She makes solids by gluing together four of these cubes. When cube faces are glued together, they must coincide. Each of the four cubes must have a face that coincides with the face of at least one of the other three cubes. One such solid is shown the number of unique solids that Ada can make using four cubes is? Well, this question is just one of those building block type questions. And I will just show you the different possibilities. And there you are. So the key, I think, was that uh, you had to make sure that they were unique, that you don't have any doubles that some of these, uh, when you rotate them, they look exactly the same. So make sure that they're unique. And the second thing I think what most students might miss is some of these guys here. Yeah, because the, the first few are pretty straightforward, but these ones involve a little bit of uh, thinking. So like I said, you've got some blocks or a Rubik's Cube or four Rubik's Cubes or whatever. Just fiddle around with this and if you're practicing. You can always do that at home. So number 24, it's 8, actually. And therefore, that would be choice D. Daryl first writes the perfect squares as a sequence. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, and so on. After the number 1, he then alternates by making two terms negative, followed by leaving two terms positive. Daryl's new sequence is 1, negative 4, negative 9, 16, 25, negative 36, negative 49, 64, 81, negative 100, and so on. What is the sum of the first 2011 terms in this new sequence? Well, obviously, you're not going to write out 2011 terms and then make a sum of all of those. What we have to do in this question is create a table 
and find some sort of a pattern, hopefully sooner rather than later, and then extrapolate that pattern to the very end. So here we go. So this is going to be n squared, and I'm going to write n and n squared, and then the cumulative sum, and let's go. So 1, 2, 3, I'm going to write, uh, I think the first 20 to 25 should be sufficient. And then for each n, I will write the n squared. So of course, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. Now let's talk about the positive and minus type of signs. The way they're doing it is the first one is positive, but then the next two are negative. Then the next two are positive, then the next two are negative. The next two are positive, next two are negative, and so on. That is how they alternate the signs. So let's just fill those out real quick. And then we will talk about the cumulative sums. Now at every stage in here, we have to add up a sum. So for example, for n equals 1, we only have one number so far. The cumulative sum is just 1. But then now we got to add these two, 1 minus 4. So now we are at actually minus 3. Then we add the next 3, and that brings me to minus 12. And then we add all the first 4, and now I'm up to positive 4. Add 25, I'm up to positive 29. But when I add negative 36, I drop down to minus 7. And so on. You just keep adding the cumulative sums. So I'll fill all those out. Now, we have to look at these cumulative sums and see if there's any kind of pattern, right? And at first, it doesn't seem like it. It's all sporadic. It's all over the place. But if you look at this closely, I was able to spot a pattern. You got a 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. And the great thing about this is that it matches perfectly with the corresponding n. It's not even something that you really have to think too deeply about. It's perfect. Matches exactly. So we are in a great position now, of course, to extrapolate all the way to the very end. And I think we don't need too many. I think our last one is 2011. So 2010, 2009, 2008. Because every fourth one, you'll see, is where you get this pattern. So as long as something is divisible by 4, as long as an n is divisible by 4, that pattern should happen. And 2008 is divisible by 4. So it should have that pattern, and of course it will. That n squared, uh, 2008 squared is 403. 2064. But what we are most interested in is the cumulative sum. Well, the cumulative sum for 2008 will be 2008. And that's the great thing about this question that it matches so perfectly. Now let's write down the, the n squareds for each of these n's. 2009 squared is 403 Eight, one, and then 2010 squared is 4040100, four, zero, four, zero, 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 and the last one will be 4044121. Four, four, one, one. All right. Now, the last part of this question is trying to figure out the plus minus signs, right? Because these are not always going to be pluses and minuses, they're going to be a combination. And just in a careful way, look at it. Start with the 4, right? If you start with the 4 and just look at these 4 guys, it's plus, plus, negative, negative. Start at an 8. It's plus, plus, negative, negative. Start at the 12. Plus, plus, negative, negative. So that means if you started here, these will also be plus, plus, negative, negative. So the first two are plus, and then we have negative, negative. Okay? So now all we have to do is figure out the cumulative sum. So let's do this one. That's going to be 2008, my cumulative sum, plus this number. That sum is 
3809. And then you take this and add to it this number, keeping in mind that that number is negative. And when you do that, you get a sum of minus 2011. And then take this and add to it that, not confusing the negative signs. And when you do, you get minus 4046132. And that is your cumulative sum, 4046132 negative. And therefore, number 25, the answer is E.